Good afternoon. So uh, let me introduce, you know, this is, uh, you know, uh, okay, my partner, you know, the co-chairman for the Hong Kong Area Association. I am Catherine Kwai. And then uh, so uh, really feel welcome, you know, especially for the, uh, today with a such challenging time, but the good weather that we welcome you, you know, to come us to join us the fourth, you know, the symposium organized by the Hong Kong Art Area Association. So say something first, yeah. Yeah, I just want, <coughs> sorry, I just want to uh, welcome everyone again. Uh, I'm Fabio Rossi, the co-president of the association, and it's been a pleasure to work with Catherine since May in running the association, uh, and with the great help of Jessica and Sophia, they're over there, yeah. they're really, make this, all of this possible. And thank you again, everyone, for coming. Thank you. So, uh, yeah. Well, maybe you sit, so it's easier for you. Yeah. If I look at the face... Hmm? This is my other supposed to be here, so... Oh, oh yes. I okay, so. I, okay. Oh, no. really? Uh, no. no, you are supposed to I'm <laughs> I see many feminine faces. I think, you know, you all know it. This is the uh, Hong Kong Art Area Association, you know, the fourth, you know, the symposium. And this is uh, a non-profit organization. And we all, in, uh, up to today, we have uh, 52 members, you know, Gary, from regional, local, and international. And then we have also, you know, some Gary like me, 28 years, but some young, uh, you know, Gary's. So our primary objective are to increase the understanding and association of the primary market and the crucial role of Gary with the Hong Kong art ecology by providing, you know, one voice and opinion. So to our Gary member, and we want to help, you know, our members, you know, to do good business, you know, and also represent them, you know, to voice our needs, you know, to the government or in co a collaboration with the other, you know, art museum institute. So uh, like Connie, Connie, <laughs> the art center, Hong Kong, you know, uh, muse uh, university museum, you know, thank you for coming. And we hope, you know, with the coming year, we have more collaboration. We will create more program for our members, you know, members, you know, not only the owner, the staff, you know, also to join, you know, to expand our knowledge, you know, and our, you know, and also to increase the awareness of the association. Okay, for the association, this is the, the seven years. And then this is also the art week, you know, starting, you know, from, uh, I think, you know, uh, Monday up to now. So running from the 21st to the 30th. And then our mission is to present a collective front of art gallery together with various facades of the art industry. And we wish, you know, we can become one of the biggest, you know, art festival in Hong Kong. And even though at the moment, we have so many, you know, cancellation, you know, of the art activity. I think you have been aware of this last, you know, five month situation. But with this challenging time, so uh, Fabio, our board member, and the Jessica, so we, we decided to go ahead with the Hong Kong Gary Wee. And we believe, you know, art is not only, you know, especially Gary. We are open to the public, you know, we wish, you know, we give them a place, you know, you know, so that, you know, everybody can come in and enjoy the art. And the free space, you know, to express, you know, their views. So we also believe, you know, the art can, you know, like a healing, you know, and reconciliation, you know, for people. So uh, that's why we also have this symposium, you know, we get all the, you know, speaker from overseas, renowned, you know, the art gallery, you know, uh, you know, I mean, owners, you know, curator, you know, to share their opinion with all of you. So uh, uh, let me introduce more. For this, you know, symposium, I would say, you know, the major person, you know, to handle, you know, the two, you know, program is uh, uh, Fabio and the William. So uh, both of them are really put a lot of effort together with Jessica, you know, and the Sophie to make a beautiful program. 
So thank you. So uh, I'm not going to talk so much about the program. I will give to my partner, Fabio, to give you the detail. And then I hope you enjoy the symposium. And please, you know, give, our, our, give us our advice, you know, and comment so we can improve, you know, on our next year's symposium. Thank you again for coming. Um, thank you, Catherine. Um, first of all, on behalf of the board uh, of uh, Hong Kong Gallery Association, I would like to express my health and gratitude to Alice Mong, the director of Asia Society Hong Kong Center, for partnering with us for the fourth year in organizing such an important event. I would also like to thank uh, our sponsor for the general support, um, Arbazo Global Groups, Philip Salvatore Ferragamo, Without them, Hong Kong Art Week would not be possible. Uh, we are returning for the fourth time as the flagship program of the Hong Kong Art Week. And this today Art Symposium brings together a roster of over 20 professionals from the local, regional, and international art scene to engage in discourses on topics that are relevant to the art ecology in Hong Kong and beyond. We are grateful for their participation in what, as Catherine has just mentioned, uh, are challenging times. It is in moments like these that, that there is even more important to come together to share ideas about the present and the future. The theme of the symposium this year is back to basic restructuring the future as we return to the fundamentals and rethink the strategy in creating a sustainable community for today's art world. The thoughtfully curated program will prompt discussions centralized on cultural development and art criticism in Hong Kong, as well as dissect current and prospective alternative forms of art collecting and gallery operation beyond our city. A little introduction to the structure of the symposium. In each panel session, 30 minutes will be dedicated to the main speaker who will give a presentation on the session topic, after which we'll uh, go straight into a roughly one hour discussion with other panelists coordinated by a moderator. And then after that, there will be time so for some Q&A. One of the highlights this, of this year include the screening of award-winning documentary, Herb and Dorothy, which I encourage all of you to come and watch tomorrow uh, around lunchtime. We'll be serving also uh, juices and sandwich. Um, and um, it's a wonderful documentary about a couple that put together a great collection uh, with very, uh, very minimal, very small means. Uh, and then the keynote speech will be delivered by Swanya Rafael, the museum director of M Plus, uh, which of, and hopefully she will give us a, a great uh, overview of what M Plus is gonna be. You can find details of the program of the art symposium and the speakers information in the booklet, which are distributed at the entrance of the JCO. Um, I also want to, I want to, uh, so feel free to reach out to the Hong Kong uh, uh, Gallery team, uh, Hong Kong Gallery Association team. Jessica and Sophia will be here throughout the uh, two days uh, to find out more about the, 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 the program and also about upcoming events. And again, I would like to thank them because they both work tirelessly, not just for this event, but throughout the year. Without them, the association will not function. And um, without, Further ado, let me introduce the first session of the symposium, Art Market versus Culture Center. Where does Hong Kong stand? As Hong Kong grows to become an internationally recognized art market with global art fairs coming to the city, what is our progress in terms of cultural advancement? This panel will focus on Hong Kong's position amidst the greater China and the Asia Pacific region, lending an analytical lens to the challenges and opportunities it faces. With that, I'd like to invite this panel main speaker, Connie Lam, Executive Director of Hong Kong Art Center, to speak on this subject. Connie has been instrumental in promoting the development of the Hong Kong art scene uh, for many years by serving a number of committees, including the Hong Kong Art Administration Association, the Hong Kong Field Development Council, and the Jockey Club Creative Art Center, to name a few. After Connie's presentation, we will have a panel of experts and galleries that will come together and evaluate under the guidance of our moderator, John Tain, the head of research at Asia Art Archive. We hope you enjoy the symp our symposium. Thank you very much for coming again. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, first, I, once again, I want to thank you, the Hong Kong Gallery Associations, and. I think it's really important you are very bold to make this decision to make this happen, uh, particularly in this time in Hong Kong. 
it means a lot to, for the Hong Kong people and also to the ASEAN. Thank you. Um, I'm really delighted to be uh, sharing my thoughts um, regarding the topic. After I have received the invitations by uh, Willem, um, I've been sitting through its uh, titles for a while and thinking mm, what I should sh share. Um, particularly, it's like um, what is the relationship between the art market and the cultural uh, center? So they are having synergies or making into two different parts. Being an administrator for more than 20 years, though I know I look a bit baby-faced, but I've been working over 20 years in, in the art center and uh, in the art field already. Um, what I've learned from the arts and culture scenes in Hong Kong, as well as the around the globe, that um, actually an ecology which carries multiple meanings. Um, firstly, I would say that the arts and cultural scene is an ecology. I mean, it's a vast system consists of a large numbers of components. Second, an ecology is about connections. Um, each members of these ecologies are interrelated instead of being isolated with each other. You, you see that this, everything is related. Um, it's not only about um, art people, but it's all the surrounding, even the uh, social environment, um, uh, the economic crisis, everything is correlated in the art ecology. Third, an ecology is, is organic. In other words, there is no formula or single mechanisms to govern how the com components interact with each other, and then we cannot predict. I think um, in 2018, same year, same time, we cannot predict what have been happened in Hong Kong, like today. So. A lot of things is um, unpredictable. To me, the art market and the cultural center are both members of this uh, art ecology. Indeed, they serve different purposes, and they have their unique role to play. But in my two cents, they should be working together in a complementary and harmonious way. So I think um, what the Art Gallery Association um, had forming as the, uh, the galleries in Hong Kong, forming the Gallery Association is a very beautiful thing because uh, they are not um, looking at about themselves, but they thinking about the bigger ecologies, and, and that is very important. As an administrator, for my primary job is to promote the development of artistic excellency. And you can see in the diagrams, um, the goal is to achieve a change of process, and the involvement, the participants of every stakeholders uh, in the art ecology, including the art markets and the cultural uh, center which form a circulating system that sustain the vibrancy of the arts and cultural scene just like today um, but I'm very happy today we, we're having a talk in here and then in the convention center we have the museum summit and then we have other talks that uh, happen in, the, in Hong Kong um, in the same day I think that meant a lot to show that um, Hong Kong is gradually is a, um, a, a developed art uh, ecologies and, and also making things much more sustainable and we understand that nothing can be perfectly planned as the art ecology is also affected by what I've um, um, shared that is like uh, the factors like politics, economics, uh, sustainability, instability, and Hong Kong Art Center is very used to this because we've been working, we born in 1977, it's 42 years ago. And we have been facing the social turbulence is common for cultural centers. So we have been gone through the um, uh, economic crisis, and we have gone through the uh, handover, everything. So having turbulence is, is I can't say it's natural, but it's part of the art scene. Because normally, we find that a lot of um, cultural issues become a very good um, inspiration for artists to do things. So what is the role of cultural center? Is, as you know that I'm from the Hong Kong Art Center, I, I will use this art center as an example. And this is the, uh, the, one of the uh, first and oldest uh, non-government run art organization and art center in Hong Kong. So um, what, what the role of the art center is, uh, as you see, is like uh, we're filling the gaps. 
uh, in the arts and cultural sense of the community and responding in time exploring identity of a community, a space for diverse voices and genres, audience building and place making. Filling the gap. Um, back in the um, 60s, arts mainly belonged to um, like a elite and, and also the venues and art programs were run by the government. As we can see back then, uh, one could only enjoy arts in and City Hall, and also my, my, my university, Lok Yao Hall of the university, <laughs> University of Hong Kong. It was at the time a group of local young professionals uh, realized that um, Hong Kong is need of an art venue initiated by the local people, uh, for the local people, and run by the local people, and lead by these three uh, fine gentlemen, uh, Dr. Tao Ho, uh, who is an architect, uh, Professor Long King Men, whose expertise is um, opera. And then Mr. Bailey, uh, Bill Bailey, actually his profession is he work in the, in the government for the UGC fund. Um, and then it's like uh, this person was actualized with the endorsement of the Hong Kong government and many social um, elites and also uh, celebrities. And of course, uh, uh, artists, yeah, at that time. And from there, the three um, fine gentlemen, uh, Ms. Dickers, uh, strive to fill the gap of the local art scene by building Hong Kong Art Center as the platform, not only for the Western art, not only for the traditional uh, Chinese art, and not even only for the local art, but the integrations of interactions of these three together. In the um, opening exhibition, this is the first exhibition, so I, I think uh, not everyone know about that, but uh, I, I, I see our, our old friend, Johnson, Johnson's what must know about their first exhibitions in the art center. And Catherine might be also be there also. So um, this is the uh, art exhibition created by Tao Ho. And this exhibition is already, uh, found, already um, found the DNA of the art center. Because we put the international artists, uh, renowned artists, and you see, can recognize the Porky, and then we have Monet, alongside with the uh, Chinese artists and Hong Kong artists, uh, the Hong Kong talents such as uh, Chan Fuk Xin, uh, Gay Lo Chen, and Gu Mei. And Gu Mei is a, uh, uh, he's, uh, she is expert in the Ling Lan, uh, the um, in painting. Um, and Chan Fuk Xin, I no need to uh, share more because you know him very well and he's become a quite legend of Hong Kong. So a cultural center is always like a radius of the city which uh, detects and responds to the people's concern and interest. In 80s and 90s, uh, Hong Kong was used to look up to uh, European art uh, while we focus on developing the local art scenes. But in the meantime, we also want to know more about the contemporary art movement in China. So due to our geographic locations, Hong Kong gradually became a win window of Chinese art scene. And Art Center also uh, began to show the independent Chinese films and visual arts. And sorry, Johnson, I don't know <laughs> you recognize yourself. <laughs> so we, we, because, uh, we've because we been preparing our 40th anniversary um, documentation, so and we dig up all the things. As, so, so this is um, thankful for Johnson. And then also with uh, Oscar Ho, um, who is the uh, exhibition director um, of the Hong Kong Art Center at that time. And they, all, they are truly visionaries, and, and this is a uh, hinting. And that we have the uh, China's New Arts Pro 89 um, exhibit in the Hong Kong Art Center. I, I think this is, a, this is a something um, not only uh, unique to Hong Kong Art Center, but it's a very special thing, Hong Kong as a platform to uh, show the uh, Chinese contemporary art to the world. And I think this is uh, something very important. And I think um, back then, I, I think um, no one will uh, have the ideas as uh, how these artists uh, will be, become so, uh, household names. It's like uh, Fang Li Jun, Li Wei, Wang Guangyi, uh, and Zheng Fanzi. So, so I think this is uh, something um, we never, when, I think when the time when Johnson and Oscar uh, doing the exhibitions, we never know that is after 20 years is, wow, the, the international art scene changed so much. And, but in the meantime, um, I think this is what the uh, cultural center will do is they will uh, 
do a lot of uh, new things, and they they don't think about is that as what is the uh, how successful at that time, but they are thinking in the future. So I think this is really important. And I want to highlight um, uh, one thing is like uh, we do a lot of um, uh, experimental uh, exhibitions and also is uh, identity searching um, uh, around the time is uh, because we are. Uh, the Hanover is 97. So before 97, we have a lot of exhibitions. But I want to highlight uh, the exhibitions is after the Hanover is in 1998. This is, uh, the exhibition is, um, is called Hong Kong Re Re Recarnations, New Loading Archaeolog Archaeological Find. And, and if you, uh, a few years ago, if you have watched uh, Stephen Chow, Zhao Xingqi's film, The Mermaid, actually they also uh, come from this uh, myth, Hong Kong myth. And I, I think it's very important, it's up, up to now. So we are still talking about Hong Kong identity. We go to a lot of um, the local myth and uh, our co local um, handicrafts. That's why uh, the, the, the art government will pro promote about the intangible cultural heritage. So this is the root and also the inspirations of our uh, local artists. And, and I think this is um, uh, very important is like, uh, what is the role of the uh, cultural center is we have to be very there. Sometimes we have to touch on some political issues and then we have to embrace um, um, the freedom for the uh, freedom of expressions. And I think this is uh, really important. Um, and, and then it's like, um, uh, in the, our 40th anniversary, says we have uh, made uh, exhibitions about the one dry gr grammatical and called the past, present, future tense. And actually, we're not talking about our center, and we are not only limited to talking about one chai, but we use one chai as a base to talk about the development of the, the whole Hong Kong uh, through the eyes of the different artists. And so you can see the, and then we, uh, and then also in this, uh, we also define is what is Hong Kong artist and what is Hong Kong artwork. And uh, most of you will know that Matt Marcus is actually, um, is a two French architects have been working in Hong Kong over 28 years. And, and then they are very inspired by uh, uh, Tan Foxy, Louis Chan's painting. So, so that's why uh, this artwork is responding to Louis Chan's painting, and then we put them side by side. So uh, again, what is the Hong Kong identity? So is that limited in a, a certain ethnic, or we are much more open to embrace uh, different uh, ethnics uh, living in Hong Kong? And, and, and we have a, a big uh, Indian populations in Hong Kong, and then we have invited Nasha. Of course, Nasha is not living in Hong Kong, but he come to Hong Kong uh, very often in a way. He just had an exhibition in Hong Kong uh, two months ago and the, at the music. And, and this is self Ho. I, I think it's very important is that is like we make use of um, um, these exhibitions to let artists to think, to rethink about Hong Kong in different times. And self exhibit, uh, this exhibitions, uh, this has work is not talking about uh, the Hong Kong, but his his emotions after the uh, post umbrella movement. So I, uh, but it's you, you put, he put in it subtly, and then you have to find it by yourself. Uh, again, so I I think it's like uh, being in art centers is uh, we have to raise fund, lobby uh, different uh, the stakeholders in 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 Hong Kong to work together um, to provide resources for artists to to make art and relevant to the uh, the time, and I'm I'm very grateful and thank you for um, uh, some of because our South have been uh, represented by a gallery, so we have support from gallery and we have uh, support from patrons, and we also sit funding from the ADC and make this exhibition happen, and and I think this is uh, also something um, in Hong Kong now is like uh, everyone has so limited resources, we can't do things by ourselves. We have to have partnership. And then we have to work with um, the uh, the corporate and also the private patrons. So we can see that the social and cultural values of us always come before its market value. And such a point, the cultural center serves as an important platform to, for artists to fulfill the mandates of exerting social and cultural impact to the society. And only after that, 
their social and cultural impact can be converted into a market value, which in the end becomes the source of subsistence for the uh, continuations of their life as an artist. Um, yes, uh, Sisa. So um, uh, you know that is like a, uh, her story. Uh, I just um, I, if you don't know, I just uh, the quick description is uh, Sisa, who is a uh, who used to be a Filipino helper in Hong Kong, but he gets flame to work in Hong Kong as a photographer. So when now when she is uh, exhibits in the state, the people will call her as a Hong Kong artist. So I think this is a very beautiful story. I, I don't think much places of the uh, Philippine helpers will become transformed as artists in different parts of the world, but Hong Kong, this is uh, very unique. And also, um, uh, this artwork is about gentrification, it's by Jaffa Lam and Gaylord. And yes, I, I think I don't have much time, I just, uh, quit this part, but I think one thing is really important is like a sound art. Oops, am I doing the wrong thing? <laughs> yes. And then, when, for example, I take the sound art because it's like a, a loss of art form is very niche, but we need to do things to cultivate. So we have been promoting sound arts in the art centers for more than six years. And I think this is really important. Now the, um, the audience space is still not very big, but if we don't do it, it will not be grow. So this is a very important thing about what the cultural art center need to do. Now is like a, uh, we have everything in the new, I think uh, starting from the years of 2000, when Hong Kong government decided to have the West Kowloon Cultural District, everything, uh, the Hong Kong landscape had been changed. So um, we have uh, not only the local galleries and we start to have uh, international galleries coming and then in the past, uh, we don't have, uh, apart from Asian society, uh, you are the, uh, before then, you are the best uh, museum quality galleries in, in Hong Kong, but now we have more, I think it's really good, and we have Daigun, and, and we're coming up to have Amplus. And then it's like, uh, we have a lot of things. So, so that's, this. I think it's very important is how we can gather together the different um, stakeholders to do things together to make Hong Kong different. I think this is the, um, lastly we have the uh, public art project. I think this is a very good example because um, without the uh, support from the government, we cannot get a space. And then says without the, the gallery support, we cannot, it, it's very difficult to get artworks from uh, famous artists and then without private patron support, we cannot um, commission local uh, young artists to do some artwork. So I think this is really important is like, uh, with doing this uh, project, we bring people all together. And, and that's, that is uh, something very beautiful. Um, why we, uh, why my colleagues pick this as a pumpkin is like, a, it's very interesting. We need an icon. So with this, uh, Yoyogi Kusama's um, artwork, and we attract a lot of uh, media's come to coverage. And then when they come, and then we can introduce a local artist to them. And and this is exactly 42 years ago when we opened the Hong Kong Art Center. What Tao Ho is thinking is he put the international masters with the local talents because we need to have a platform to let people know how good is our local artist. They, when they put side to side, side with the masters, they might not be um, perfect, but their creativity will be sure, can be recognized. And, and other things that I want to try to uh, talk about because of the, about the relationship of our market and the uh, cultural centers is, uh, and in 2013, we start to have um, initiate is called a 
collectors, contemporary and collaborations. And this is we also bring forth the, the fifth one. And, and again, I have to thank you, Johnson, uh, uh, because it's the, the 2013, the first exhibition is created by Johnson, is focused on Hong Kong collectors. So why we want to have a collectors exhibition is very interesting. Uh, this is created by Johnson, the first one with the Hong Kong collections. And then we, because it's like, um, I think at that time is there's a lot of art there, a lot of, um, for those who are not into the art world, they think art has become only a commodity. And buying art is just for investment or just as a decorative uh, put on the walls. But actually, collectors is also playing a very important role, particularly in the Asian art scene. Um, not because in the Asian art scene, the uh, museums, um, collections um, is limited. They would not have a big budget for collection. So I think it's Hong Kong is uh, getting better now because of the Amplers and then the Museum of Art and they are jumping up uh, their <coughs> budget. But still, a lot of Asian countries, they, they lack of that. And that's why um, we have the um, Indonesian art uh, collectors exhibitions and this is uh, really a true example how the Indo Indonesian collectors are helping the growth of the Indonesian Indonesians are seen and then we have yeah and then this is Japan and thing but I think I want to highlight what we've been doing in the um, this year is on the uh, fifth editions on the Chinese contemporary art um, I think a few years ago, you, 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 if you have been attend a uh, uh, Wuli Six uh, exhibition, as, which is presented by the M Plus, and you can see this as the how good um, and important about the Wuli Six uh, exhibitions. But although they have a, 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 a timelines, but I, I think it's it's also very interesting. We have a collectors um, been because he is born at that. I mean, is uh, he's very active at that time when he was a student. So when he grow up, when he have wealth. He collects all these artworks in the 80s and 90s, what his, uh, he grew up with him. And, and this is what he see, the development of the Hong Kong, I mean, there's a Chinese contemporary art scene. And then he also including Chinese artists into his collections. And side by side, we also um, put an um, archive collection. So I don't think a lot of people collect uh, art, catalog, uh, art catalog and artifacts uh, collections. Uh, to understand the uh, history of the Hong Kong, uh, I mean, the uh, China, whatever art collections development. development. But in this um, exhibition, we put alongside about the um, archive and the exhibits together. So I think, uh, again, doing a collateral exhibition is not about um, how expensive the work, how important works, but this is also a, a time you can look at how the, it's a more like a, cultural perspective to look at how the country has been developed in a certain time or period of time. So, um, conclusion, yes. So having said all this, I, I simply would say that the cultural center is never at opposing position against the art market because we work, we have to work together. And with the vast art ecologies of two entities actually work, in a com complementary way, and both of them serve for the sustainability of the ecology. Like the diagram I saw at the beginning, artistic excellency has to be fit with resources on both monetary and also non-monetary terms. Although the ventures of cultural uh, center might not always bring direct economic benefits, the platform, the network, and the opportunities it creates, it creates for artists may facilitate their works to make impact on the society and which may turn into social recognitions and even market value. And what we've been, um, one thing is like um, when you've been exhibited uh, in a cultural centers uh, in, a, in a certain period of time, and then there's, uh, particularly during the Art Basel time, and there's a, a lot of international creators coming. So they, artists will receive more international invitation, and, and this is how things can be go along like this. So what keys about the cultural center is that it should always be ready to be the cultural radar 
and facilitated ASEAN to respond to the contemporary issues in the society. And in some occasions, such as the Sculpture Park, a cultural centre can even stir up new synergy with the art market to amplify the, and also the government uh, to amplify the impacts of the arts. So it's always about collaboration and balance. I know Amplis is inviting uh, Ms. Maria Basso, the director of Tate, uh, this December to share about uh, share with Hong Kong on how museums and cultural institutions should be transformed in order to remain relevant in the 21st century. And I think uh, not only I'm looking forward to that, I think um, you all will. Um, and I thank you for the University of Hong Kong. Actually, you have been invited, Maria, to come to Hong Kong before to how arts is relevant to a um, instability um, society. I would like to wrap up my sharing with the saying, one souls and another rips, rip, rips. I think it applies to the cultural center and the art market. Why the art market concerned more about the economic outcome, searching for new stars and grooming new collectors. And now, of course, uh, for example, for the uh, gallery associations, I think it's more expand is also about the social well-being of the society also. So the, and then that's why the cultural centers has paid more attention and we have to think since um, the commercial side is doing so good, so what we're going to do. So uh, we have to pour more attention to the process of the cultivation, which leads to the economic, um, uh, gradually to the economic outcome. But so like cultural center, particularly in the art center, we do not receive any recurrent funding from the government and we do have a foundation and we don't own, own by anybody. So we are self-financing. So economic outcome is also important to us. So, um, so we have to have an entrepreneur mindset. After all, it's, it's all about the sustainability and the continuations of the ecology. There are indeed common ground between the arts markets and the cultural center. So from now on in the near future, uh, we strive together to cultivate an art environment for wider audience, next generation artists and art patrons as this part is still have much room for development. Thank you.